How are we, guys? Good, are you? Oh, good, thanks. <laughs> got a couple nervous, John, at the minute. You got a couple really? nervous. <laughs> uh, don't be nervous. You'll be all right. I'm probably the most nervous. What did you do today, then, John? Um, just had a light training session today. We were off yesterday after the game, so just literally had a light session there. I'm still in the training ground now, so the lads, a few of the lads who didn't play are still still training. I oh, love it. That's what we all like to hear. And obviously, mm. a big win the other day. Huge, yeah. Much needed win, especially against West Brom, like they're down around us, so we have to beat them. Right, John, let's get cracking then, if that's okay. Yeah. Perfect. Jack Earnshaw, do you want to ask your first question, mate? Yeah. Um, who is the hardest player you've ever played against? Um, it's a good question. I think the best player I've ever played against is probably Kevin De Bruyne. Um, but obviously he's not up against me. But he, he'd be the best player. I'd say the best striker of the hardest to mark. Probably Aguero. Because he's actually not he's not that hard to play against. But you know that if he gets a chance, he's going to score. Um, and last season he had two chances against us in two games, two goals. So I'd say he's he's definitely the, the best striker I've played against. Uh, my question is, if you weren't a footballer, what would you have liked to be? Uh, good question. Um, either a teacher or a dentist, I think. Yeah, I don't know why dentist. Just growing up, um, when I was in school and stuff, just always had it in my head. But I'd like to be a teacher too because I would have I would have played Gaelic football in Hurling back home, which is amateur, and they play in the summer. And as a teacher, you get like two or three months off in the summer, so that probably would have tied in well. Could live like a professional athlete for two or three months. So yeah, I'd say probably a teacher, you know. I've got more of a football related uh, question. I've got what would be your advice to someone who's looking to like work their way up through semi professional football? Um, just enjoy it. Um, you know, every every kid that wants to play football, obviously they, they want to play because they enjoy it and you know, as long no matter what level you're at, as long as you're enjoying it and you're trying to improve every single day. Then you know you never know where it can take you. Um, I think the biggest thing, the biggest bit of advice would probably be to learn and to listen to your coaches. Um, always trying to improve every single session, every single day. Um, I think that's the key, you know, to, to wanting to be a footballer. And you know, that's the best bit of advice I was given was to just every single day try and learn and try and improve. It doesn't matter if you're, you know, playing back home with your mates or whether you're playing for your country and playing in the Premier League, you have to keep improving. Um, so that'd be my big advice. Train hard, keep learning and then keep keep improving. What would you say are the three most important attributes to make it professional? Number one, um, mentality slash attitude. Um, I think that's definitely the most important. Uh you know, you can have all the ability in the world, but if you don't put the work in and if you're not training hard, then it can only take you so far. Um, so I would say having a, a good attitude in terms of wanting to train well, wanting to be on time, um, do extras. I think that's that's the most important, having a good attitude. Obviously, talent is, you know, you talent comes from practice and, you know, practice is probably the next one. Um, how much work you put in. You know, away from training sessions and on your own, and then when you do get to the training sessions, all that practice tends to pay off because you've done it, you know, thousands of times. Um, and then number three, just enjoyment. Um, you have to enjoy what you do. Uh, you know, there's no good going out and practicing something you don't enjoy. So, I mean, if you enjoy it, the the rest comes easy. So, I'd say they're probably the three bits of advice: attitude, practice, and enjoyment. What are the qualities and attributes someone like me, who is not in the who is not in an academy, would need to become a pro like you? Um, kind of what I've listed above. You know, whatever attributes you're strong at, keep working at them. Whatever attributes you feel like you need improvement, keep working on them. Um, and I think it comes down to you know your mentality, you know your attitude to to working hard, making sure that whenever you look back. You know, you can try and have no regrets that you've done everything possible to, to try and make it as a pro. But, you know, sometimes it, it doesn't work out. Sometimes it does. But if you give everything and, you know, you dedicate most of your time to it, then, you know, you can, you can have no regrets. So 
I'd say work as hard as you can, keep trying to learn, keep trying to improve your game and you know, you never know. And um what were the things you did at my age to help you get where you were and how did that help you? How old are you, bud? I'm sixteen. Sixteen. Yeah. Cool. Um when I was sixteen I I moved to England um from Ireland. I moved to Sunderland and you know, I was lucky to be in a really good academy with really good facilities and stuff. And I think, to be honest, from the age of about 14, I, I knew I kind of wanted to be a footballer. So I just worked as hard as I could. Um, you know, when I moved to Sunderland, I was staying in digs uh, with a family. And, you know, I'd probably go into the training ground in the morning at half eight. We don't start training until half ten. So I'd be in the gym, you know, trying to get, get stronger and doing extra. And then I'd train and I'd stay in the stay in the training ground till about five o'clock every day um just doing little bits of extras doing asking the coaches what do I, what do you think i need to improve on and they give me little tasks every week to improve on something different every week you know be it my left foot be it you know running pace power um all different things and i left i left no stone unturned really you know if, if i never kicked on and made it as a footballer i knew i knew it wouldn't be because i didn't work hard enough um a lot of a lot of my friends, you know, didn't quite get there. Um, some of them didn't work hard enough. Some of them did. Um, but you know, the I'm, I'm sure the ones that did work as hard as they could um, definitely had no regrets. So, from from my personal point of view, um, you know, I, I can really say that I, I worked as hard as I could and I dedicated my life to to trying to be a footballer. And you know, I think at the end of the day, that's all you can do is is try your best at anything you do. Um, and that's that'll always give you the best chance. What has been the biggest highlight of your career? Um, I would have to say promotion to the Premier League with the Blades. Um, yeah, I think that was just unbelievable. The feeling, you know, the weeks leading up to it, the weeks, the weeks after the celebrations, the drinks, <laughs> um, that kind of uh, yeah, that buzz, and just to see the fans on the way back from Stoke, all outside Bramall Lane um that's that's feelings that will live with you forever um you know i'm lucky enough to to have got promoted to the premier league at, at a brilliant club like sheffield united it would have been boring if we went up at norwich or something like that um because they weren't having many celebrations <laughs> but uh nah listen brilliant uh getting promoted is definitely the, the highlight of my career what's your opinion on var at the minute um you got a kind of overview on it or, or anything? um yeah very hit and miss I think obviously for some things it's really good. Um, the only thing I, I think is a bit daft is you know the the clear and obvious. I think some decisions are clear and obvious. You know, make the decision with VAR, brilliant, done, thirty seconds. But then if it takes four or five minutes, then it's not clear and obvious. I think you've got to let the on-field officials make a decision. Um, listen, if it's a fraction offside or a fraction onside, you know the decision on the field should probably stand or like a you know, fractional handball or there's a lot of gray areas. I think it should just be for, for clear and obvious. It would make, you know, make lives a lot easier and it would make the referees lives easier because I think some days now they're tending not to make decisions and they're putting the flag up late and, you know, putting the flag up a minute late could lead to someone getting injured, um, especially if it's clear offside. So um, there's always going to be an element of doubt in football. There's always going to be mistakes. It's a game of mistakes. So I think they should, you know, they should probably take take a lot of lessons from VAR this year. We've seen some incredible decisions, and you know, apart from the clear and obvious ones, I, I don't really think you know it's it's kind of it's probably taken a bit away from the game. To be fair, which did you find harder, Gaelic football or English football, and why? Um, I. F- probably found English football harder at the start because I grew up playing Gaelic um, and it just came second nature to me. Um, I probably enjoyed Gaelic football the most out of every sport growing up. Um, It was my passion from a young age and, you know, moving to football then, I think I started playing English football about when I was about six, seven and I'd been playing Gaelic since I was four or five. So... Yeah, it was um, it was a good uh, good experience to play Gaelic football, especially until I moved to England, because it definitely made me made me stronger. You take a lot of hits in Gaelic football, and you know you wouldn't get away with that over here. You're getting red cards every week, so um, no, definitely toughened me up. 
what is the best piece of advice a coach has given to you? As a professional, is it? An uh, academy professional. Twenty. Um, best bit of advice I ever got was probably from my dad um, when I was young. He just said, "Believe, believe in yourself. You know, whatever you do, believe in it. I don't care whether you play Gaelic football, football, hurling, tennis, whatever you play. Just believe you're good enough." And I think that's probably stuck with me when I came to England. You know, just whatever you feel like you want to do, believe, believe in yourself, believe that you're good enough. Even if, even if sometimes, you know, your mind's playing tricks on you, you don't want to believe it, just believe it. Um, you know, uh, there's a, there's a funny saying, fake it till you make it in some, in some situations. But, uh, no, I just said the biggest advice I was given was to believe in myself and, you know, believe in whatever you want to do. Um, what were the barriers you faced when becoming professional? Um, first big barrier I faced was homesickness, um, leaving my family in Ireland, not getting to see them, living with like a new family in England who were brilliant to me. Um, that was probably the first real, real big barrier I faced. Um, moved to Sunderland and then I turned 19. My father passed away in Ireland when I was in England. So that was, you know, that was probably the lowest point of my life. Um, hearing that, getting a phone call you know, away from my family, my father's after passing away and that was a really difficult time. Um, and then shortly after that, I broke my leg uh, just when I turned 20. So that was, uh, that was another barrier. But, you know, my, my story is, you know, is quite unique because I've had a lot of setbacks and, you know, it's good to, it's good to come out of them setbacks and, you know, kick on and keep working hard because, you know, at the end of my career, I look back and I can you know, I can speak to young players, young lads coming through who have setbacks and say, look, if I, if I can get back from this, you know, you can get back from this. And I think at the time, you know, you feel sorry for yourself and you're really down. But now kind of all the years have gone on and I look back and what I've achieved since and, you know, it makes it all that sweeter and means I can come on here and talk to you guys and talk to whoever has had setbacks and say, look, don't worry. Like I've been, you know, I've been there. I've been through bad injuries, been through, you know, losing members of my family and, you know, I've come out the other side of it, thankfully. And, you know, there's there's always light at the end of the tunnel if you're willing to keep the head down and keep working hard. Would you see yourself as Sheffield United captain in the future? That's the first one. And the second one is who's got the worst fashion sense at Sheffield United? <laughs> I had to include that because I've seen a few on social media and they're, they're really interesting. <laughs> well, a few of the lads' is gear, is it? Yeah, McBurney uh, shines out, especially. Yeah, I knew you were going to say that. Uh, we'll go with McBurney then. To be fair, though, I like I like McBurney's gear. He pulls it off. Um, pulls it off quite good, but it is definitely the most rascal gear at the club. Him and Moose, has, Moose likes his gear. Um, whether you think they're worst dressed or best dressed, they're, they're dressed. Um, and they're dressed a lot more than myself and a few of the other lads who just come in in tracksuits most days. Um but going to your first question, yeah, listen, you know, Billy Sharp's a fantastic captain at Sheffield United and I've been lucky enough to to step in and captain the side when he hasn't played and, you know, it's a, it's a huge honour to to be able to wear the armband um, at any any club or with your country and, you know, to do it here has been brilliant and it's been, it's been a great experience. Great answer and that concludes it then, guys. Thank you very much, John. It's been an absolute pleasure. No worries. I've got a question for you. Does anybody want a shirt or a pair of boots? Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. Right. Uh, I'll sort it. What do you want, shirt or boots? Let Karen know. And I'll, um, how many is there? 12, is it? Thank John for all that. That's Thanks amazing. Yeah. 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 Thank you. Thank you. Great to see you. Take it easy. Absolutely. Thank you. Take care. Thank you, John. See you later. Take care. Bye-bye.